Hey, Daniel Lanier here, and if you're like a lot of people getting a lot of packages delivered and things like that, you may have heard the term porch pirates, and that's people stealing your packages off your porch. So I'm going to go through and actually set up something cool because as you guys can see, my porch is actually wide open. There's not really a lot of places you can hide a package, and some of you guys might be the same way. So I got something really cool to show you guys to kind of help you if you're dealing with uh, the security of your packages and you want something a secure place to put your packages in when you're not home and they get delivered I got just a thing for you. So this is Daniel Lanier. Check this out So here it is the clever made parcel lock box the s100 series uh, So this is gonna help you with that that issue if you have any problems or you have some concerns with uh, Packages being delivered or taken off your porch or something like that You just want to make sure you have some extra security for the packages you have delivered this is going to help you out. This guy has a 10 year warranty, which is awesome. So just make sure you register. You always got to register those warranties. So make sure you do that. But we're going to open this guy up, get it all put together, see what we got, show you how to go through setting it up and getting the codes ready and where you're going to put those codes. And you're having a package delivered and you want them delivered into the box. We're going to talk about all that. And this is available. The carrier app works for UPS, FedEx and the post office. So all three of the major carriers We'll be able to help you out and um, put your packages in this. So let's get to it. Let's open this guy up and get going. All right, so here we go. We're gonna get into this, put it all together. So the tools you're gonna need, you're gonna need some type of electric drill. So we got our electric drill right here. Uh, I just got some bits with me in this case, see what bits that I need, and a Phillips screwdriver. So that's all the tools you're gonna need. You actually to install this if you're gonna when you mount it outside, you definitely want to anchor this. You're gonna anchor this. You don't want to just put it out there because depending on where you live, somebody may just take your whole box. I've seen people take ATM machines, so they may just take your whole box and try to work on it later. So you're gonna anchor this to the ground. It does come with a masonry drill bit, so you don't need that. It comes with it and it comes with the anchors as well. So you have that. It also comes with batteries, so you're going to need to change the batteries at some point in here. There are AAA batteries that it comes with, but it does come with that, so you don't have to worry about that. So let's get in here. I'm just going to start taking this stuff out. And basically, it's all the plates that make up the box. So all your sides that you're going to have that make up the box. And inside of here, you've got the batteries that we talked about. It actually comes with the right size um, Phillips head for your electric screwdriver. <laughs> it's cool. And it's got some masonry screws here. The screws for the box itself. Your keys for the box. Your hinges. And then your masonry drill bit. So it comes with all this stuff to get it together. So drill bit. Anchors. Concrete anchors. Screws for the box. Phillips head for your electric drill, batteries, the keys, hinges. So all those things are included in here. You got your directions in here, and I thought this was cool. They actually have this hanger. So when you put when you want them to put something in a box, it actually has a hanger that you can hang on your doorknob to tell them to use the box, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. And it's got some other stickers in here, some information for your warranty, instructions. All right. And then it's got your remaining plates. Box. All right. So that's going to be one, four sides, top and bottom. So we should have six, two, three, four five six that's everybody all right i grabbed my smaller electric screwdriver because i don't think i'm gonna need the big one for this we'll see i think this one will work just fine so your panels are labeled so we're gonna start off with b and c so this is c right here a little c on it so this is so this is c right here so i need c and I need B. All right, and there's B right there. So that's right. Now, something I didn't point out, this, they actually say that this is a two-person job putting this together. So, let's see if I can put this 
Yep. All right, so on C, look right here. We got these little vents right here. You want the vents to the bottom, not to the top. So you want the vents pointing down towards the bottom. So we're gonna take those guys. B panel has this little knob on it and that knob is for the hinges. So that's gonna be up towards the top. Now, you can't mix these up. If I put this panel on the wrong side, <clears throat> the holes aren't gonna line up. So you have this ridge right here that connects and then you have your holes inside right here. And you're gonna take that and you're gonna hook that ridge in and you're gonna line it up. Now, depending on where you face it, from left or right, all I gotta tell you is you won't be able to line it up on the wrong side. So you're gonna just put it on the side where your holes line up and they line up perfectly right here. So that's the side that you're gonna put this on, okay? Then you're gonna take your screws and you're gonna screw your screws in the holes. There's no nuts, these screws just screw right in and that's what we're gonna use our driver for. So let's get this all put together. Get this side put together, then we'll start on the other side. I like to start off the screwdriver just to get them kind of going. Kind of place. All right, so boom. That's the first side, so that's C and B. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing with D. <clears throat> All right, so we got C and B. Now we're gonna take D. Again, it's got a little ball joint on it, so we're gonna take D. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna take that little ridge, hook it underneath, line up the holes. And then we're gonna put our screws in here. So, got these screws in here. I don't know why right now I'm having a flashback. Back when I was in the Coast Guard, from the screws, I feel like these screws are gonna fall out. It's to fall out in the engine room and start every ping and ding you heard of it falling. You need to look for that screw forever. It's having flashbacks of these screws falling down in the engine room, but if they fall right now, they don't have far to go. So it'll be an easy process of looking for them this time around, but I am having flashbacks for some reason. All right, drop these things in there. Piece of cake, look at that. All right, so now we got three sides together. This next one we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do the next panel, which is E, and this panel has the keypad on it. So when we put this one on, before we put it on, we actually have to put the batteries in first. So we're gonna drop the batteries in, and then we're gonna add E, and that's gonna give us our four sides. Look at this, we were moving right along through this thing. Piece of cake, all right, so let's do that. Let's drop the batteries in and get going on that. What we're gonna do is just slide this down. So we slide in the battery case. I mean, this is easy, putting batteries in. And just sliding this down, a little cover, battery cover. And then we're just gonna put our batteries in. Now something I always tell people when they purchase something that has batteries included. You don't know how long that thing has been sitting on the shelf. So don't be surprised if the first set of batteries you use, you go through them and they go through quickly because you don't know how long this item has been sitting on the shelf and how long the batteries have been in there. So don't let that surprise you if the first set of batteries run out fast, you just don't know how long those batteries have been in there. What you wanna really pay attention to is the second set. All right, so that's it. So we got those batteries in there, pretty piece of cake. Now we're gonna get this panel going and put it on the other three sides. All right. So we're gonna get this panel on, which is the last panel, panel D. So we're gonna hook these in. Just make sure the keypad is towards the top. So it should be up towards the top where the ball joints are. And I'm basically just taking this and just hooking this on. So our little latch is right here. I'm just gonna go outside of it 
hook it on. Go outside, hook that on. And there we go. And then we're gonna flip this over basically so we can do our screws in here. Ain't here to keep that go off. Get all that. Make sure your holes are lined up. And I'm just gonna drop all these in. You guys have seen how that part works. I don't need to show you guys that again. So I'm just gonna just go ahead and get all these screws in here. And we'll do some NASCAR magic. Get everybody locked in place. So there we go, all together. Got all four sides, and all we gotta do is the top and bottom, and we can be done. Well, we gotta program it with the keypad, but let's get the top and bottom on. So this next phase we're gonna do, we're gonna put the bottom on first. So the bottom is F. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn this over upside down. I got it upside down, so the keypad is at the bottom, upside down. And then we're gonna take this guy, and as you can see, we got a couple things going on here. So we have these holes right here, which are actually for our uh, concrete bolts to go through when you actually mount it. So it's got some holes on the inside. Now, a cool thing I just noticed, these legs, We'll actually keep it from dropping all the way in, so you don't need a second person. So I'm just gonna drop that right in there. Look at that. That's, man, that's a piece of cake. It's easy. So we drop that in. Again. Back to NASCAR. Screws. Oh, down in the bilge. Funny, I cut my finger off when I was a kid on my right hand. I'm right handed. And I do a lot of things with my left hand, but obviously using the screwdriver is not one of them. All right, so let's go. Oh, my, my finger's good now. Somebody was thinking about it. And my left hand is like, oh, you're gonna talk about me. I'll show you. For basketball, and the left hand's pretty good. All right, there we go. So we got the bottom on, nice and tight, good. You know what's next, the top. We're doing this thing, look at this. Oh, yeah. Safe packages coming up. All right, so let's get the top going. All right, so putting the top on, you actually have a hinge right here, so I'm just folding this hinge out, which is gonna screw right here, and then you're gonna use your struts, your hydraulic struts, to actually put the door on, actually go that way. You'll put the door on, the rest of the attachment will be with these guys. So I'm gonna take this, lean it up here, and I'm gonna get our screws going. Installing the hinge. Here we go. So what you have is you've got these spring-loaded caps at the end of the hinge, and you're just gonna push them on to the ball joints that are on the plates and the lid that we installed earlier. To get it in the direction you want, you just gotta turn them, and then you're gonna push it right on to the ball joints. So you just turn it in the direction you want, and then you're just gonna push it right on because it's got a spring on it. So you just push that right on. You got that on. You're gonna push the top on and you are good to go. Now, if you needed to take these off for some reason, because I had to do this, you just need some kind of scribe to release the spring. You're gonna slide it in here, then push the spring out, and then you can take them off again. But just putting them on, all you gotta do is just slide it right on, just push it right on, and you are good to go.
First thing I want to say is it took me about several tries to get this sequence to work correctly because the instructions in the booklet were not very clear and they did not follow the correct sequence to get this to work. So it took me several tries, but I got it to work. This is the sequence that will work to change the master code and to program the keypad. So don't get frustrated with the instructions that come with the Clever Maid. Just follow these instructions right here. I got you. The first thing you want to do when setting up the code for the lockbox is setting up your own master code. It comes with the master code already keyed in. So you want to change that to your own master code before you set up the primary code that's going to be used all the time. So the first thing we're going to do is reset the master code. So we're going to hit once, twice, number, twice. Once, new number, uh, let's go one, two, three, four, once, twice. So once we have the master code reset, now we can set in the primary code that's going to be used all the time to get into the lockbox. Essentially, you can use both codes to get in, but the one you're going to give people to come in and actually put the packages in is the code that we're going to set up next. You don't want to give anybody the master code to the lockbox because then they can change the main code. So you will be the only one that has the master code to the lockbox. Once two times uh code twice your code sorry once once hit once get that beep and your code we're gonna do two three four five hit twice again once so it's three times you gotta hit it in the end now if I go so that last that last time you gotta hit it three times, not twice, it's three times. All right. All right, so now we're gonna get ready to actually install the lockbox in place where you want it. So I wanna go through a couple of very specific details because there's some things you really want to think about when you're getting it positioned and where you want. Now I've got kind of a smaller space here so I've got to consider my door opening. Now for me I've actually got a large enough door that I can still open it. I got an extra wide door here so I can still open my door have plenty of space to like bring things in and get things moved into the space so I'm not worried about that but you want to check the clearance of your door so if you have a door in place check the clearance of the door. The most important thing, if you're putting it up against a wall like I have right here, you got to get the install ready with the lid open. So I'm going to open this up. And I want to make sure that I got enough room, enough clearance here to open a wall. If I get it too close, I may not have enough clearance for this to actually open. So you want to make sure that you got enough clearance for your box to open. All right, so I wanna make sure I still got enough. And I'll do another test here in a second. I'm trying to maximize my space here. Plenty of space, good. I checked the door earlier, that's good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mark out. So it's got some holes already in here, ready for, cause what you're gonna need in this step is uh, 
You got the masonry bit that comes with it, so it comes with your kit, and then you got your masonry screws that you're gonna screw everything down into. So you're gonna take this and drill, but I'm gonna mark my holes, then I'm gonna drill, then I'm gonna drop these guys in. So let's go ahead and get going on that. All right, so here it is, the Clever Made lock box to help you with those porch pirates you know put your packages in here so your packages are delivered you got a safe place to put them in now we got through the installation the only thing that i will say with installation the bit that came with it i don't know what these tiles are made out of but they definitely don't make them this way anymore because these tiles burn through some bits and i had to actually get some special carbide bits to kind of get through this to do my mounting uh the installation so something you may want to think about depending on what you're going into you may have to get something a little more heavy duty than what came with the kit so i burned the head of the first one burned the head of one of mine bent one of mine and burned the head so i ended up going to get some carbide uh tips to get through but once i got the holes drilled i was able to just screw them and i actually used a screwdriver because you don't want to over tighten because you can you can basically strip out the concrete when you're putting those bolts in so you want to be careful with that so i got those installed got everything in good to go lock works make sure i have plenty of clearance so the lid could open up but this is a great solution you know if you're having issues with you know your your mail your packages being delivered taken off your porch this may be a great solution for you it's made by a clever maid i got this at costco so not not that long as far as the installation getting all the sides and everything put together it was a pretty simple process there install was actually fairly cut and dry and easy it was just depending on the surface you're going through like i said you may have to get something a little special uh depending on what you're you're drilling into so that may be just something to think about but definitely a great solution for your packages on your porch if you don't have a place to hide your packages for the postman or ups or whoever fedex to to hide those packages this may be a great solution for you right about now i'm sure a lot of people were saying well daniel how do you get the carriers to put the stuff in the box how do you get them to know what the code is all right i got you so the first thing you're going to do is when you're shipping something the shipping address you're going to put the instructions in the second line in the shipping address now this is about my third variation because i tried a few things here to get this to work this one seems to work the best so i put the lockbox instructions in that second line in the shipping address when you're shipping something so that second address line so my instructions are lockbox the number then pound this seems to work the best because i didn't have it like this before so it lets them know put the number in then you have to click the pound button on the lock box then open lid because sometimes the lid does get stuck and it doesn't open all the way so i put that instruction open lid so they know once they hit the pound they can just open the lid when it goes to open now when it comes to the carriers all the carriers have their own apps that you can put special delivery instructions in and all you're going to do is the same thing you're going to put your instructions for the lock box you can be a little more descriptive in here because you have more characters that you can put in the apps themselves but you want to register so ups the post office fedex they all have their own individual apps where you can go in and you can actually register and then you can put special delivery instructions in so you want to do that with all the carriers and get that done now amazon you can actually do a little different now even though ups sometimes does deliver amazon packages you still want to put it in the in the app but you also want to put it in your amazon shipping address so the same thing we just talked about in the beginning the second line in the shipping address you want to put the lockbox instructions there so you're going to put those lockbox instructions you can also go under special instructions there's a line that says do you need instructions to find the address that's the only place you can kind of really customize so i was able to be a little more descriptive there and put some uh text in there uh, with the instructions in the lockbox would be a more descriptive in there when I did that. This seems to work good. Like I said, I don't have a, uh, a lot of problems with Amazon delivering packages. They're the best out of everyone that delivers the packages. They pretty much get them in that lockbox 97% of the time. 
So this is what you want to do. You want to go into Amazon, go into your settings and your addresses and the address, your default address you want to put in there. If, if it's your house, you want to put this lockbox instructions in that second line. And then you also want to add it under your detailed instructions. You can add some other information there, but that's it. You're going to do this and then you're going to get your carriers on board. You're going to get Amazon on board and I'm, Hopefully, you guys will have great success getting your packages delivered. Won't have to worry about those porch pirates because you're going to have everything going into the lockbox. At least maybe 97% of the time you have things going into that lockbox. But it definitely works. It's fantastic. And this is the instructions to get that going. So here we are. Two years later with the Clever Made lockbox. About seven pounds heavier. Still carrying some holiday weight. Don't judge me. All right. Let's talk about the lockbox. So... The reason I waited two years to finish up this review, the lockbox one, I wanted to see how it held up with the weather. And I actually wanted to really get a calculation of how things are being delivered in the box. Are carriers actually using the lockbox? And I got some answers for you guys. So let's start off with that. So the carriers that deliver to the, to the lockbox, Amazon, fantastic. Those guys are probably 95, 97% of the time, they are putting things in the box, don't have any problems with them. UPS. They're probably about 90% of the time they're using the box, putting things in the box. Uh, the post office, they're probably about 80% because I don't have that many things delivered through the post office that go in the box. But the things that get delivered, if it's really small, they'll just put it in my mailbox so they don't use it for that. So I'd say the postal service, probably about 80% that they're putting things in the box. FedEx is the absolute, absolute worst. FedEx is probably about 40, maybe 50% that they're using the lockbox. They will actually look at the keypad and then just put the box down. They don't even try sometimes to put things in the box. So FedEx is probably the worst at putting things in the box. But if you're getting Amazon deliveries all the time, this is fantastic way to go. Because if you're trying to stop porch pirates or just protect your, your packages, because I don't have anywhere to put packages to protect them from the weather or anything, they would just sit out here without my lock box. And the majority of the things that I've ordered fit in this box this thing fits a lot of stuff i've put i've had multiple packages delivered in here it fits a lot of stuff i've never had the weather get inside of here my packages have never gotten wet and it's rained plenty of times that i've had packages delivered never got wet held up good uh everything the hinges everything still is good one thing i will also say there's vents in the back of the lockbox which it should be vents in there because you want this to vent out little critters get in there I had a wasp nest in here once, so you want, kind of want to watch that and just clean it out. Little lizards come in there and they kind of hang out in there. So you kind of watch that. You can get some critters that crawl into the vents in there. So that, that did happen, but not a big deal. You know, I just vacuumed it out and wasp nest was in there. Just killed, sprayed them and just vacuumed them out. But the lock box works great. It is a great deterrent to keep people. And like you guys see, I don't have really a place to hide packages. Besides this now, you can put packages behind it for FedEx um, but I don't have anything other than this to hide packages so this was something that was really useful for me so if you're looking for a way to stop those porch pirates something to actually lock and put your packages in because there are things you can put packages in that don't have locks to them but if you're looking for something that actually locks that you can mount to your your porch area or whatever the clever made lock box is for you it's pretty inexpensive it's easy to put together easy to install I highly recommend this thing. And none of my packages have ever gotten wet in here. It's been raining plenty of times that I've had packages in here. The weather has never been an issue getting inside this and getting my packages wet. So this thing works fantastic. I highly recommend it. Clever made lockbox. Check it out. Get it. Um, you can get it, I believe, at Costco had it, but you can get it at Home Depot as well now. So those are the places that I have found it that you can get this thing. But if you have, like I said, Porch Pirates, this is definitely the way to go to kind of help keep your packages safe, keep them out of the weather. Great way to go. Clever made lockbox. This is Daniil Lanier. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. I got more reviews, DIY, how to's, and of course, cool motivation coming at you. I'm out. Deuces.